Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good evening. It is the Earthmaster back here on the live stream with an update video here on this uh, Tuesday night, May 30th, 2023. It's about 11 13 p.m. here along the West Coast. So, some areas may be uh, Wednesday, but here in California, it's still the uh, Tuesday, the 30th here. All right, so we did have some activity kicking up here at 6.2. South of uh, New Zealand here, around the Auckland Islands area, as you can see here on the map, 6.2 coming in earlier this evening at a defaulted depth here of about uh, zero kilometers. Did have a couple folks asking why a zero kilometer depth, and uh, that could be many, re uh, many reasons there. Uh, it could be having something to do with this, kind of hard to see on this area, but there's some little peaks here sticking out very close to the water although this is this looks like it's into the uh kind of this little ridge off the ridge here so not for sure why the uh zero kilometer depth there that would indicate surface right right at the ocean ocean surface uh, but it doesn't look like it so we'll see if they revise this overnight maybe that's just what they decided to put for now but there's some little it looks like little islands or maybe uh, some type of volcanic activity here uh, just to the east. Uh, again, 6.2 south of New Zealand around the Auckland Islands area. Uh, I did pull up historical data here and it uh, looks like um, movement last year right around June or uh, May. Uh, they had a 6.9, a little bit further down here around the uh, Macquarie Ridge along this plate boundary. Uh, quite a few hundred miles here south of today's activity. Now looking at historical data specifically within this zone that we've seen today, 6.2, uh, looks fairly active just specifically in this region. We had quite a few sixes here over the last few years, including a 7.4 uh, that kicked up here back in 2007. So technically very active uh, across this plate boundary. It's been, uh, if you really think about it, it's been awfully quiet uh, throughout here for a little while. Um, so, you know, things are eventually going to catch up and it looks like, um, you know, it's kind of working its way, uh, through this plate boundary a little bit. There was another earthquake. It looks like on the globe, a 4.4 that kicked up here just shortly. Um, let's see, when was this? This was at 721. This was one minute later. Now I'm not for certain if this is a legit earthquake or not. Um, if it is, then we'll go into that here in a little bit. But source parameter is provided by the GeoNet servers. Um, hard to say, though, if this is going to be a legit earthquake. And how I would check that, uh, of course, is by looking at the uh, seismograph stations here within the South Island, New Zealand region. Now, the uh, earthquake away. i got to go here to the all magnitudes. The earthquake that struck here uh, a few hours back, they have it set as a 5.9. Uh, now I'm not seeing, I am not seeing that subsequent earthquake there. You guys see that? There was supposed to be a 4.4 that occurred just a minute after the 6.2. Well, it's gone off of the GeoNet servers. I, I don't see it here. And this is the all, uh, all magnitudes, including the deleted events. Let's see what this one is. That's a 3.6. Uh, when was that one? I think a, a while ago. Um, but I'm not seeing it right here in their list. So it's possible the EMSC got the notification that the GeoNet servers put out, but uh, has have not removed it yet from their uh, earthquake catalog book. Because if you think about it, it should be up here, right? Here's a 5.9. 221 uh, so technically one minute later should be the uh, earthquake and I'm, I'm just not seeing it so that's one way of looking at it plus you can also look at the earthquake drums uh, down here around South Island uh, more uh, position to where that uh, large earthquake struck here just south of the region earlier now I don't see it I definitely don't see another 4.4 out here uh, at all the earthquake we're seeing of course is at 6.2 uh, around the Auckland Islands area 
well south here of the um, New Ze uh, South Island, New Zealand area. A four-pointer should show up here, even in the um, the shadow, so to speak, of the seismic wave. Some of these look like they may have had a second secondary earthquake in here, but I, I've seen that quite often here with New Zealand and their drums for whatever reason. But I don't, I don't really see the four-pointer up here. It would be showing up even uh, into some of these uh, seismograph stations that are centered more up north. So I believe it's a false earthquake, and uh, we'll see if they uh, bring it down tomorrow or not. Uh, for now, let's see what uh, else has changed here with that uh, movement down south. I wouldn't doubt it, though, to watch it, you know, definitely keep an eye on this area. The general plate movement out there along this region, uh, it's not a subduction zone. The Alpine Fault is a little different here. It should have arrows kind of pointing uh, a little bit uh, to the northeast in this area to the, um, to the southwest a little bit. But here on the map, it's got uh, the arrows generally um, backing up this area. There's subduction zones, obviously. The Kermadec Trench northward into the uh, uh, Tonga Trench and the Hikarangi subduction zone. That's a trench area as well. But this region right here is not uh, specifically a major subduction zone area. And not for sure why they don't have uh, the uh, movement on here on this map, but I'll look for that in another day. But uh, should should possibly uh, be looking at some further uptick here across New Zealand, considering this activity today. Um, we'll keep an eye on that region there. All right, uh, so looking at data following the um, 6.2. Did have a 5.1 well up north, 11 kilometers deep, well away from the 6.2. Uh, this active uh, area has been, well, this region has been active definitely here within the last week or so. Looking at the uh, seven days, 4.0 and above, 4.5 and above, excuse me, uh, shows some fairly active conditions here across eastern Afghanistan and areas up into the where, uh, up into where, <laughs> where we've seen the 5.1 strike earlier uh, this evening. Um, yeah, so that's going to be up here, Tajikistan region. Or ta Tajikistan, right? Tajikistan should Tajikistan. That's the area that's seen the 4.5. So this one is actually well over here. Uh, somehow I kind of missed that. That's the. Uh, let's see here. Let me take a look and see what we got. It's been a while since I've seen any activity up here, but definitely looks like we've seen some in the past, as far as historical records go. Uh, but again, it's been been a little while. 11 kilometers. All right, uh, let's see what else we have out here. And that's from the USGS, the EMSC model here reporting that a 5.1. Same location. Fairly active, though, across the uh, Mediterranean, it looks like, over the last 24 hours. Mostly some uh, threes and twos. What do we got here? 4.0 kicking up here into the Middle America Trench. Just off the coast here of Mexico. Nothing showing up on the USGS map, but there is some activity obviously there on the globe. Um, as that four pointer is just popping up right now, the latest quake here in this area. Uh, South America. I did see a little bit of activity earlier today, uh, including the five pointer. It's gonna be that 5.5 Chile area just offshore into the Peru Chile Trench, about 37 kilometers deep. Uh, for that earthquake a little smaller movement as well within the vicinity uh let's see here uh, a little cluster of quakes here across japan the kuro kamachaka trench fairly quiet up here uh, we did see a little activity prior to the 6.2 down south here along the java trench 5.0 uh, looks like that earthquake coming in earlier uh, couple hours prior to the 6.2 20 kilometers deep around the uh, Sumatra air uh, Indonesia area just off the Sumatra coast into the uh, northern end here of the Java Trench some activity uh, looks like it's trying to make its way up here around this plate boundary 
Uh, again, the Kurokam Chaka Trench, quiet. The Aleutian Trench, very minimal activity. The Big Island of Hawaii, only shown a handful of earthquakes here on the globe. Looks quieter, but uh, let's double check that here real quick from the uh, Volcano Hazard site. I just want to zoom in here to one of their seismograph stations. I mean, it's just probably the, the smart thing to do if, if you want to look for um, activity. Uh, of course, that one's not going to work. Um, man, pick pick and choose. It looks actually it looks a lot quieter here tonight. Over the last 24 hours, things are a little bit more less active, right? Notice there's not as many spikes out here on the graph as the previous nights. Uh, again, this could be just a little slowdown there at the Kilauea volcano. Continue to keep an eye on that California area. The, a little bit of movement here into the northern California area, it looks like, early this morning into the Cascadia, southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. One earthquake here coming in the last couple hours there at Lake Almanor. Um, just been an on and off thing there at the lake, underneath the lake, I should say. Very shallow earthquake, 1.1 kilometers. Rest of California here, uh, aside from this little swarming region here near Silver Peak, Nevada. Um, that's been an off and on thing there as well. Uh, the rest of California, somewhat minimal. We do got one earthquake here outside the Mount Whitney area. Lone Pine at 3.2. Uh, up in the mountains here, it looks like. Um, 4.3 kilometers deep. Down into the extreme southern part of the state. One earthquake in the last hour near Borrego, Sp Borrego Springs area, 2.0. And uh, this activity here that we were watching this morning, a little swarm here at the Salton Sea area, since it's died down, um, doesn't look like we've seen anything since the lack of activity uh, about 9 o'clock this morning. A little bit of movement here on the Imperial Fault here, just north of Mexicali. Uh, overall seismic activity here in Southern California, just about average here. We'll continue to watch that, see if any uh, further swarming pops up. Uh, the trimmer map here tonight. Let's go ahead and check this out and see what we have. 452. There we go. 452 epicenters of trimmer. Uh, a pretty good number once again. Just barely peaking up above the previous event back in April of this year. Um, so that makes for a total tally of the week at um, about 3,436. Th 3, now this did begin back on Tuesday so we're missing a couple days of data uh, that was probably a little bit more closer to 4,000 or so but you as you can see most of this activity is situated and positioned here at the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone all right space weather activity ramping up slightly here we're looking uh, at some M flare activity notice a trend getting a little sidestepping here up towards the M flare level that is coming off of, uh, well, it looks like we're flaring right now. Let's see what this is coming off of. There we go. Far side sunspot region here over over on the uh, eastern limb. Very bright. Currently flaring nonstop, it looks like. Um, that is a very active region looking at the UV filter there. Um, looks like it was noticed and spotted here on the solarham.net site. 3321 is not the region that is currently flaring uh, it's going to be this area right here it's kind of hard to see uh, but we'll, we'll get a better look at that here uh, tomorrow morning probably uh, far as areas that may be potentially active on the earth facing side here about the only one here well maybe two this one's grown a little bit as well these things they they quickly form they quickly die the come stable and then sometimes they just rapidly get all crazy uh, so right now I think you know the main area to watch is that regional sunspot on the south or the uh, eastern limb here 40% chance for an M flare probability 99% chance for a C flare X flare elevated at around 10% probability continue to keep an eye on that uh, we do have a couple coronal holes that are currently facing the earth um, not super impressed with it. Uh, these are uh, a little bit of southward tilt there on this coronal hole. This one does not look all that uh, drastic, but it could 
uh, in the days ahead could amplify some conditions it looks like around the June 2nd time frame maybe of uh, some aurora possibilities. Right now the aurora is very minimal up at the higher latitudes. KP index fairly low. Uh, definitely continue to keep an eye on that. Uh, weather activity here over the next couple days. This is a current day one valid um, Well, this, uh, let's see, when is this? I think this is for tomorrow, right? Uh, I believe it is. Sometimes it, it's hard to tell because they put these things out in their time zone and it's not yet tomorrow yet. At least where I'm at. <laughs> uh, either way, it looks like a little bit of activity kicking up there across um, um, very spotty areas, Nebraska uh, through Kansas, and uh, looks like portions of Oklahoma and Texas out there in the panhandles. Uh, some slight risk of uh, possibly wind. We'll check this out tomorrow morning, see if they've uh, updated anything. All right, guys, have a good night. Uh, I'm a little tired. Got some heat coming this way here in California. It's been relatively nice, but uh, I don't think that's going to last here for too much longer. Supposed to reach up close to 100 degrees this weekend. Ah, uh, yes, I knew it was coming, but uh, oh well. All right, folks, have a good night. Uh, stay safe out there, and make sure you guys, uh, you know, just be alert, stay prepared. Uh, watch for some further movement, possibly up here around New Zealand. Remember all the activity here. Uh, let's see here. Did have quite a bit of activity in the last 30 days along the uh, East Indian Ridge and areas around the Antarctica plate here. Uh, a lot of movement. These are divergent boundaries, so a lot of movement here working its way up north uh, in the northeastern fashion. That could be applying further stress along this plate boundary, Pacific Plate, um, which could put New Zealand here in, in a little bit of line of fire, so to speak. So just continue to watch that. Um, you know, they've had some activity here uh, in the months past. It's been fairly quiet. You know, there's always earthquake activity because it sits on a major plate boundary. But as far as large-scale activity goes, I mean, we last 30 days, 4.5 and above. I've seen a 5.6 uh, there into the Bay of Plenty back in early May. Uh, and that's that's pretty much about it. Aside from the, uh, aside from the Kermadec Trench up here, it's been awfully quiet. So continue to watch that area for some movement all right folks have a good night stay safe out there we'll catch you guys back here tomorrow take care